Hey guys, what I'm here to do is tell you about something that I find uh, kind of interesting in this kit. Uh, we try to be very creative in everything we do, either Jim Mooney, Jack Ellis, myself, sometimes even the guys here at the shop. But in this case, I'm going to discuss what I feel is a kit that we did something quite unusual with it. We've done it across the board, but especially, I think, at least from my perspective in this one building, and that is the Boathouse, the uh, Addison uh, Marine uh, Company factory there. And I'll tell you why we think it's different, why I think it's different. Now, understand that I built the one that you see in the diorama, but it wasn't easy to build because it's stick construction, and you have a lot of these very tiny well, not tiny, super tiny, but uh, almost like corner posts, but a little heavier than that, that have to be glued together. And the thing of it is they have to be exactly perpendicular to each other. And then they share uh, diagonals that support the whole assembly. And if you've ever tried to get something like this perfectly aligned and perfectly straight, you'll know what I mean. There are three uh, strips, you might say, or lengths of supports. Each length has five vertical supports and one horizontal cap and a total of, I think, three, uh, two, four, six, eight. I think it's eight diagonals in each one of them. So uh, you're talking at least 24 diagonals, uh, 15 su vertical supports, three horizontal supports, plus diagonals in between everything else. So how do you do it? How do you get it right? So I'm going to uh, get a little closer with the, uh, with the video camera here, show you some components. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is show you exactly what we have here. Now, first of all, to get everything square and to get it right, and I have some photos that I shot as I was building this thing, uh, we've developed a template, and it's actually a two-part template, just like that, if you can see it. This is the rear part, has these holes in it, just like you can see here, those are punch-out holes, and this is the front part, and this is actually where the sticks lie, and the back of this, if you notice, it's white, where this side is brown, because we've designed it that we that we engineered this so the back of this can be easily removed, yielding and showing you a self-sticking back. Now what I'm going to do this right in front of you here is I'm going to take this and laminate these two pieces together so the holes lie towards the top. And you all you have to do is use your hands here, use your fingers and feel if you're square. And I actually just did that backwards. So I've got to make sure I get a little comfortable sometimes and it's, uh, can't, be, can't be too confident here. And basically what I'm gonna do is press these together. And what we have now, if you can see that, top layer is laser cut with room for sticks, which end up being the frame. And the back are these holes. Now, what, what are these holes for? Well, once you build in the front part here, you will be able to actually poke through with either your finger or a pencil or whatever and poke through here, you can see this, and push out the assembly once it's in there, okay? Uh, there are also two other areas in the jig right along here that are pre-measured for cutting out the diagonals to get them absolutely perfect. So you can see that. Now, I am gonna have some pictures as we speak here so you have a better idea what's going on. Now, the idea is to take all of your timbers that are involved and pre-stain them. Whether You can use anything, alcohol, the ink, uh, any kind of washes, whatever. Um, and the first thing to do is measure one and place it, and this is not measured, I, this, this I just did quickly, in the very top. So you have your horizontal stringer. Now you'll be doing this three times because there are three assemblies. Once that is cut to length, you just simply press it into position there and cut the remaining uh, pieces of lumber. They're all the same dimension. Cut them exactly to length. It's very critical. And place them in each of the five, one, two, three, four, five vertical positions, making sure that you glue these as you put them in. Now you understand the beauty of this is there's very, very little glue that can fit on the end of a stick like this. So by having a jig that holds it exactly at 90 degrees and gives it a good chance to dry is very, very critical. Uh, once these are in position, uh, we've supplied uh, the kit with um, these brackets here. I don't know if you can see those really close to cut there. Okay, you won't be using all of these, but these brackets will be glued 
on the joints above them and represent gusset plates, and that will complete the uh, the glue seal. Now they they could dry in here, and once the assembly is totally dry, you want to go and poke them out, remove it, and start on the second assembly because there are three of them in total. Okay. Now what do you do once you have these assemblies? Now you have three three of these lengths of verticals with a horizontal on each of them. We've supplied you with also a secondary template. And you can see it right there. It says exact size holes. And this is actually the actual footprint of the actual building. And the holes here are square and they match the vertical columns exactly. So once you have a, a, a all, all, all three of your lengths assembled, you literally stand them up in, on, on this plate. Now this is going to be uh, expendable. It is, um, it is MDF, it's a 16th of an inch thick, it's kind of sturdy. And once you stand your assemblies in here, you'll actually put stringers across them and start tying everything together. And you can see that in the photos. So in the beginning in the photos, you'll have noticed that I actually did a sketch of the building because it was a concept I had and we worked off the sketch. And you can see, and I'm going to use a little cheat sheet here. You can see the the, um, the first assembly, the first jig all assembled there, followed by uh, the uh, the wood once it's been uh, assembled in the jig, uh, both assembled and taken out of the jig. And you can see them right there. Now, at that point, I was not using the gussets, and I should have used the gussets on there, but it was early in development, so I wasn't doing that yet. Finally, you'll see all three of the assembly stood up in the base plate and it's way down. I use some pan pastels, just something to weigh it down because there are horizontal strips to be put along the way uh, during the assembly. And you'll see that in the instructions. And then of course, there's a, uh, a cutting mat there that you can see the whole assembly standing there. And eventually what we did is we added uh, what would be concrete piers underneath, which are included with the kit. I don't have them in front of me here. And they're all pre-sized for one half inch tall. And those have to be glued on to the bottom of the assembly. Uh, after the assembly, uh, the upper part of the assembly there is absolutely firmly glued into position. And then you can see the position of the office sets uh, that lies within the, uh, the kit, as well as an overhead view of what's going on. So why do I like this so much? Because we came up with a lot of, I think, pretty clever ideas, um, a way of making something that would be kind of frustrating, uh, far, far less frustrating. And that's what we do at Bar Mills. So I just wanted to spend a moment and show you just one aspect of this kit. Uh, welcome to Rickety Cove and from Bar Mills, Artie, thanks for joining us and thanks for your support.